Hello and welcome to Dad Got This, where we answer the tough questions like, what is Alabama white sauce? Should you put it on your barbecue? And how do chickens get sick? That one's easy. They get human pox. Today we are trying a recipe I have never done before. Alabama white sauce. It is a mayo concoction that you dip barbecue foods in, and it is supposed to be fantastic. Now, like I said, I've never tried it, so I kind of wanted to. What am I going to cook it on? I'm going to do it with chicken. So let's get a chicken. This is a chicken. I prepped this last night. Let's go to then so we can find out what it's like now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. Welcome to then. The first thing you need to do is get the chicken out of the package and pat it dry. We want to remove any of the juices from the bag. Also, take anything that was stuffed inside the bird out at this point. We are going to butterfly or spatchcock this chicken. It is a really easy process. The first thing you will need is a really sharp knife. You can also use kitchen shears for this. I prefer a knife though, as we will need it later anyway. Start with the breasts facing down. Make two slices to the right and left of the spine of the chicken. Now using a little pressure, cut through the bones connecting the spine on both sides. You might need to do a little chop for some of the tough ones. Then pull the whole spine out. Next, flip the bird over and place one hand karate chop style in the middle and press down on it with the other hand until you hear a crack. After that, you can grab both sides of the bird and kind of fold it to make sure it's nicely separated. Flip the bird over, exposing the inside. We're gonna cut out the rib cage and some other bones to make carving easier later. Feel along the inside of the bird for the rib cage and slide your knife under it. Be careful to stay as close to the bone as possible so you don't take too much meat with it. You can use your fingers to feel where the bones are versus meat. Once we've removed the rib cage on both sides, we're gonna remove the cartilage that runs down the center of the bird. Just trace your knife down the sides and almost scoop it out. The femur at the top can kind of get in the way, so we'll get rid of that now. At the top of the bird is the wishbone, which is connected to the femurs. Grab the femur, the big bone, and twist and pull it and find the joint. Cut right through the joint and pull it out. Now you can cut away the rest of the bones and cartilage running down the middle of the bird. Remove the other femur and you get good access to the wishbone. Pull up on it and cut under it to remove it. Now, just feel around the inside of the bird for any leftover bones or cartilage and remove them. Be careful not to puncture the skin on the other side as it is exposed in the middle. Once you've removed everything, flip the bird back over and we're gonna salt the skin side with some sea salt. This is called dry brining. You can go pretty heavy with the salt. All that is left to do now is throw the bird in a container and let it sit in the fridge overnight. When will then be now? Soon. It's now. Welcome to now. This is where we're gonna go ahead and pat dry the chicken after we've learned all about our wonderful spatchcock process. We're just gonna pat this dry. You want as little bit of moisture on skin as you can when cooking if you're attempting to get something like crispy chicken skin, which would be nice. Now we're gonna dunk this in sauce, which is gonna uncrisp our chicken skin. The first thing we need to do is set up our smoker. I'm using the Ninja Woodfire Pro XL today, and I'm gonna smoke with some smoking pecan, pecan shell pellets. I love the flavor these give. They burn really well. It's actually a new bag because I went through all of my other pellets. Give it to Dad Shake. The Dad Shake either compacts the pellets and makes them burn better separates the pellets and gives them lots of air and makes them burn better, or does absolutely nothing. But I do it every time. Another tip is to make sure that your pellet hopper is literally full to the brim. Like, top it off, give it a couple extra, almost to the point where it's tough to close. That igniter for this is at the top of the unit. So if you don't have a full hopper of pellets, it's not gonna light. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna set it to the smoker setting and we are gonna do it at 150 degrees. We are going super low for the first hour to really try and build some smoke. This is a technique that I've seen other people using in other kind of cookers. So I wanted to try it in the Ninja wood fire. And then for time, we're gonna set this for three hours. It's not gonna need three hours, but I'm just being careful here. When you hit start, it's gonna say IGN. That means it is igniting your pellets. Wait a few minutes, you should get some smoke. Back to the chicken. We're gonna take some avocado oil. You can use any neutral high heat oil that you want. I just kinda like avocado oil. We have it around the house. 
It's great oil. I know I just got done saying you don't want any moisture on your skin and I just added moisture. Oil's a different kind of moisture. It'll help with the crisping. Water will hurt your crisping because it has to evaporate. The oil doesn't really evaporate, it just sizzles. So we're gonna rub this in here really well. Get it all over. One of the other benefits of spatchcocking a chicken is you have access to the inside, which we can now season. We're gonna hit it with some go. 50-50 granulated onion, granulated garlic. We're gonna hit it with some smoked paprika. And we're gonna hit some crushed black pepper. Freshly grated black pepper, not too much. Now, this is my first time really dry brining a chicken like that, so I don't know how much salt is gonna penetrate into the meat. So I'm not gonna salt this meat. If I need salt at the end, I'm just gonna add it with a finishing salt. I don't know if I'll ever get invited to the cookout or not, but it won't be because I don't season my food. I season my food. I'm hitting this bird with a little bit more go seasoning, a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper, and some smoked paprika, mainly for color. And now we're just gonna wait for that to say add food. We are only a minute or two into this and we already have some nice white smoke coming out of here. If you are like me and you are working with a Pro Connect XL and you have probes, go ahead and use them. If not, pick yourself up a wireless thermometer. I have quite a few that I can recommend. I am getting ready to do a battle between a whole bunch of them. So stay tuned for that video. We're gonna go ahead and stick a probe in the breast, probably right about there. And we're gonna stick one probe back here in the thigh. You wanna make sure to avoid any bones. Make sure it's not poking through. Yeah, I think we are in good shape there. Once it says add food, this sucker's going on. We're gonna cook it super low at this 150 Fahrenheit or Celsius for at least an hour to really try and build some real smoke flavor in here. After that, we're gonna start kicking the temperature up. By the time we're done creeping up, we should be around 300 Fahrenheit or 350 Fahrenheit or Celsius. Now we're gonna keep monitoring the chicken. We don't want this part to really go over 165 or 170. We can push it a little higher if we're trying to get crispy skin because we've dry brined this. There should be some extra moisture in there. At least that's the hope. It's ready for food. Let's get this bad boy on there. Oh, there's one more thing we are using to help our smokiness. We're gonna use this rack. This is a rack I got off of Amazon. It was advertised for this size Ninja. It was $39.99 for a set of two. I think I could probably find it cheaper, but this was the best one I could find at the time on Amazon. If you have a better deal or a better one, let me know. But the point of this is we're gonna take it here and we're gonna set it on top of our grate. This is gonna add an extra area of airflow underneath the food, which allows it to smoke better. I've tried this on a chuck steak and it worked pretty good. Probably make this a little easier on myself. I can put the chicken on the rack then transfer the rack to the cooker. We're gonna tuck or try to tuck these wing tips under here like that. Perfect. This guy goes right over here. Plug our two probes in, black to black, gray to gray. And that's it. We'll monitor the temperatures through the app. I'm not gonna set this up as a timed cook. I don't want it to shut off. I'm just gonna be here watching it. The breast is 46 Fahrenheit. The thigh is 52 Fahrenheit or in Celsius. Now that we're cooking, we can go on and make our Alabama white sauce. There are a lot of variations of this online. So I went with a combination of ingredients that I liked, but I stayed true to it. Grab yourself a bowl and add in one cup of mayonnaise, one quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of lemon juice, a half a teaspoon of sea salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of smoked paprika. You can switch that out for cayenne if you want something with a little bit of spice. All that's left to do is whisk it up and you have Alabama white sauce. At this point, I wanna say thanks to my clothing sponsor. They provide me with these awesome shirts, this hat. So if you ever see me wearing something in a video and you're like, wow, that's really cool. Where did you get that? I got it from Roosevelt's. I've been wearing their stuff for years, even before they reached out to me to do a sponsorship deal. And uh, I can't recommend it enough. These are my favorite, the, the Kuna, Kunaflex. I probably should learn how to say my sponsor's brand name, but they're called Kunaflex, I believe. And they are the most lightweight, breathable shirts I have ever worn. I absolutely love them. I recently got some t-shirts from them, which were really nice. Stay tuned, I have a couple of special videos coming up that are themed to the shirts. So if you want cool shirts like me, hit the link in the 
description. We are exactly one hour into this cook. Let's see how the chicken looks. All right, we're looking smoky and good. Very, very pale on the skin. I think we're gonna need to kick up the temp. Chicken's at 113 Fahrenheit and 118. That's in Celsius. So uh, I think it's time to start kicking up our temp. Close this guy down. We're gonna go temp. Let's drop it up to 350. That should get us a nice crisp on the skin to finish off this cook. It shouldn't take too long at 350. But we got that one hour under full smoke, so I'm hoping that's gonna help our smokiness. This is what it looks like after one hour, probably about halfway gone. Still good burn going on on these pellets, so no need to do anything there. We are just about there. I'm at 172 on probe two and 156 on probe one. Ooh, and it looks good. I'm gonna spritz it with a little bit of the same oil. We're gonna close it down. We're gonna kick this up to 400. Get a little bit more extra crisp on the skin. I'm gonna get the second probe up to 165 and we're calling it. All right, we hit 180 on the other one and 163. This thing is done. That looks fantastic. This chicken looks gorgeous. We're just gonna cover this off, let it rest for maybe five or 10 minutes, and then it's time to get our white sauce. Don't touch the rack, it's hot. I literally almost did it again. See you in a few minutes. Moment of truth. Oh, the juices that are running off of this thing. Now I got some high heat gloves under here to help me handle this bad boy. We'll get it off the rack. The skin's not really crispy, what I would consider crispy. It's definitely well rendered, but I feel like I could have probably started the crisping process a little earlier, maybe tried the air fry setting. Maybe I'll try that next time on my chicken. Still developing this chicken method, but this still looks fantastic. Let's see how the, uh, the underside looks, if it got any smoke. Oh yeah, we did get some color under there. That's perfect. That's what I wanted. Let's butcher this guy. One of the benefits to doing that spatchcock and taking out that breastbone and everything is we can go right down the middle like that. We can go over here, take off these thighs. Let's find where our bone breaks. There we go. Take off that wing, same thing. There's the joint. Get our wing off. We got two awesome looking thighs, a couple of breasts. I made a double batch of the white sauce just to be able to really get a good dunking. We're gonna try one of these breasts. We're gonna literally just drop it in that. Oh no! Alabama white sauce. I can't wait any longer. We gotta try this. Go right off. See how my chicken came? We'll cut it right down the middle. That is a juicy looking chicken, folks. Ooh, mmm, here we go. I'm gonna get one with the skin. This is, this is chicken breast, so usually not very tender. Oh, oh my gosh. The chicken by itself is great. It is super moist, very tender, and that's the breast. Let's try. Thankfully, this cutting board from Sonder LA has a really deep juice groove. Juice groove, juice groove. If you've seen my cutting board video, you know about the juice groove. But uh, the juiciness that is on this chicken is off the charts. I don't know about you, but I'm a dark meat man. Cheers. Great googly moogly, that is good. Oh my Lord. I need paper towels, hold on. Let's take just a piece without any Alabama white sauce, just my chicken. Mm. I'm glad I didn't salt anything extra. That dry brine was perfect amount of salt. God, that is good chicken. So even if you don't wanna try the Alabama white sauce, if you're just looking for a fantastic way to cook a chicken on the Ninja, this is it. Amazing chicken, great chicken. I wish it had a little bit, see that's got a little crisp to it. Some spots here in the breast have some crisp. If you'd like to pick up a Ninja wood fire, 
or any of this other stuff that I've used, the rack, I'll throw links down to anything I've used in the description below. And the full recipe for this is gonna be on dadgotthis.com. I actually have a website where I post all my recipes. I got not so good with it for a while, but I have been updating it and getting all the ninja recipes on there. They're fully printable. I don't have a huge garbled mess of stuff in front of it. It's really just a little bit of explanation and the recipe that you can easily print off the website. I'd appreciate it if you go check my website out. I wanna give a personal thank you to my members, but there's gonna be another thank you coming up here soon. You guys are the best. If you're interested in becoming a member, I do all kinds of benefits for members. They now get videos early, at least 24 hours. They get to watch the videos early. Sometimes I'll do an extended version of a video for them just for members. Plus there are benefits like shout outs and credits at the end of video. You can even get a Christmas card or holiday card from me if you go to the upper level. Really helps me out. I appreciate each and every one of you. That only leaves me to answer one question. How do you get chickens to watch your videos? That's easy. Cluck bait. Dad may tell, bad dad jokes, cook fantastic chicken, and have learned about Alabama white sauce. I've learned that English might be English and not have the greatest English, but there is one thing dad will never do, and that's an outro. So that's it. Bye. This episode of Dad Got This was brought to you by our producers. Thank you very much.